Hi kiddos, this is Miss Olson and today in library we are going to be working some more on research. Today we're going to research your skin. We're going to be using an epic ebook called Take a Closer Look at Your Skin that was written by Jenny Fretland Van Voorst. We are going to be doing some note taking on this research, but we are not going to use the KWL chart that we've used the last few weeks. I'm going to show you a new way to take notes when you're doing research. We're going to be using a web and just like a spider web, we're going to put the most important thing right in the middle, which is your topic. And I've written my amazing skin. That's what all of these little outer web parts are going to be pushing back to. All of these are going to relate to the topic of your skin, what it's like. We're going to be using this book and the link will be on here so that you can click on it. And if you remember from last week, we talked about using the tabs to toggle back and forth. That will help you when you are doing your note taking. Okay, let's look at the template for just a second. This will be in Seesaw. It says exit ticket for blank. Please make sure that you're putting your name there. So many of you are doing that for me now. Thank you so much. Again, you've got your book link here to open up the website. Fill in this note taking web and share your research. So let me teach you a little bit about how the web is different from the KWL chart. The other um, type of note taking, we started with what you already know, and that is where you can kind of do your thinking right here. When you think about the topic of your research, think about what you already know about your skin. Just in your head, make a little list of the things that you know. Maybe your skin sunburns when you go out in the summertime and you stay too long. Maybe you sweat. Maybe your skin has got a scratch on it and it's healing. So just name some things in your brain. You don't have to type this down. And then we're going to move on to the wonder questions. And in this web, we have three wonder questions and they match up with the three chapters of the book that we're going to focus on today. In chapter one, your wonder question is, why do I need skin? Chapter one is going to give you lots of reasons, but you just need to give me two reasons that you need skin. Maybe two that really stick out in your mind as you're listening. You're going to make a text box over here and you're going to fit your text box and make it small enough that your writing will fit inside this oval. Okay. Don't leave it way, way too big where things overlap. That's really hard to grade. Remember, we're going to use capital letters. We're going to use punctuation. We're going to spell things in the very best way that we can. And you can also use those tabs at the top to tab back if you need to see a spelling and then come back and fill in your web oval. Um, why do I need skin? Not just one word. I need several words. Make me a sentence. Make me a sentence. Okay. All right, the second question in your web, number two, goes with chapter two. And the wonder question is, I wonder what's inside my skin. The second chapter is going to really get into some of the scientific stuff. If you were a scientist or if you were a doctor and you were studying the skin, what would you be thinking about that's under the top layer that you and I can readily see? Again, we need a good sentence here and a good sentence here. And then finally, for chapter three, the wonder question is actually a statement. It says, name two skin problems. All right, skin problem here, skin problem here. All right, then you're going to check that box and send it to me, and I will grade it and get it back to you as quickly as possible. All right, let's move on to the book. Ms. Olson's going to be reading to you. Remember that you can open it up here if you want to and have two tabs open to go back and forth to your notes if you choose. Also remember, we're not just copying straight from the book. We're listening, putting things in our own words, and then typing our own words in the ovals. All right? No plagiarism around this library. Right, guys? Okay, here we go. Chapter 1, The Skin You're In. Have you ever heard of your birthday suit? This term refers to your skin. It is what you were wearing when you were born. It is funny, but it's true. 
Your skin is a suit of armor that protects what is inside. Skin is the largest organ in the body. An adult's skin, when stretched out, is the size of a twin bed sheet. It would weigh as much as an eight pound house cat. Skin can be thin, like the skin on your eyelids, or it can be thick, like the soles of your feet. This inset box says touch is important for human growth. Studies show babies need to be held and cuddled, and scientists have also proven that all of us need hugs once in a while. The caption says human touch has a powerful effect throughout our lives. All right, remember we're listening to find out what jobs our skin does for us. Skin has many important jobs. Look at that good main sentence right there. Skin keeps your insides in your body. It also keeps objects on the outside from going into your body. Skin forms a wall. It keeps water and germs away from your internal organs. It also keeps out the cold. Your skin keeps your body warm inside even when it is freezing outside. Your skin also protects your body against overheating by sweating. A healthy body has an internal temperature of 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 37 degrees Celsius. All right, and for this photograph, the caption reads, your skin protects your body from extreme heat and cold. Your skin is also the organ where you can feel the sense of touch. Imagine going to the beach. You feel the crunch of sand between your toes. The sun makes your shoulders warm and the waves splash on your legs. Because your body is covered with skin, you can feel with all parts of your body. Let's learn more about the skin you're in. And the caption here says your skin lets you feel things like sand and water. All right, hopefully you've answered the wonder questions for chapter one. If you want to, you can stop the video and go back and fill those in, or you can keep going to chapter two. Chapter two says, get under your skin. Take a look in the mirror. Does your skin look healthy and bright? Think again. Everything you see is dead skin. Ew, that's awful, isn't it? But true. The caption says, the top layer of skin might look healthy, but it is made up of dead skin cells. Yuck, let's find out what this is all about. The top layer of your skin is made of dead skin cells. This thin layer is called epidermis. Can you say that? Epidermis. Good job. New skin cells form at the bottom of the epidermis. So they're forming down here, new cells, and then they move upward. As skin cells die, they are pushed together and flattened. This is the skin you see. These dead skin cells overlap like shingles on a roof. They form a protective wall for the tissues beneath. You are always shedding these dead skin cells. In one minute, you may lose up to 40,000 skin cells. But think about it. If the dead skin cells don't flake off, how are the new cells going to take their place, right? It's just the way it works. A skin cell lives for about 35 days. The cell is created and sheds in this time. In one year, you will have shed more than 12 sets of skin. The epidermis is covered in an oily coating. The coating is like a raincoat. It keeps water from going into the body. But this raincoat is not completely waterproof. Your skin will absorb some water. Do you like to go swimming? Are your fingers and toes wrinkly afterward? Mm -hmm. That's what happens when your skin absorbs water. The epidermis, the epidermis is very thin like the pages in a book. Underneath the epidermis is a thicker layer called the dermis. The dermis houses blood vessels and sweat glands and nerve endings. Let's see, there's the nerve endings. 
There you go. Blood vessels help keep your skin in even temperature. They increase or decrease blood flow to the surface of the skin. Sweat glands cool the skin by releasing sweat. The nerve endings give you your sense of touch. The nerve ends and the sensors work together. The sensors detect texture or pressure, movement, temperature, itchiness, and pain. A million sensors fit in an area the size of your fingernail. When you burn yourself, these sensors detect both heat and pain. They send a message through the nerves to the brain. The brain decodes the message and it sends your muscles a message to move away from the source of the pain. Nerve cells allow you to feel a painful burn, but they also allow you to feel a cat's soft fur. Here's another tip in an inset box. Fingertips have more nerve endings than anywhere else on the body. The caption says, the nerves in your skin will tell your brain when something is hot. Wow. Okay. Chapter 2 told about Wonder Question 2. So you can stop the video and go back and fill in some answers there in your own words. Or you can keep listening and do it all at once. It's up to you. If you decide to do it all at once and you need to refer back to the chapter later, that is perfectly okay. All right, we're going to move on to chapter three. When good skin goes bad. Now this matches up to question three, which was about skin problems. All right, your skin works hard to protect you, but sometimes skin hurts or gets cut. Pain is the first sign that something's wrong. Pain is a signal that cells have been damaged. Do not ignore this signal. You might hurt your skin more. Delaying care might also make a wound harder to heal. Cuts and scrapes are common injuries. You might get a cut from a sharp knife. You might also scrape your knee on the sidewalk. Your amazing skin will heal itself over time. Skin cells multiply and rush to seal up the wound. Most cuts and scrapes do not go deeper than the epidermis. They can be cleaned and covered up with a bandage. If the cut is very deep or large, you may need stitches. A doctor will fix your skin like you might fix a torn shirt. The inset says, Scar tissue is made of stronger material than regular skin. Scarred skin is stronger than it was before it was injured. All right, and the caption for this young man says, when you get a cut or scrape, you can protect it with a bandage. All right, so that talked about one problem. Here we go for another problem. Sunburn is also a common problem. Skin burns if it is in the sun too long. It becomes red and sore and sometimes it peels. Once again, your amazing skin works to protect itself. Melanin is a substance, or melanin is a substance, your skin makes to protect itself. This substance protects your skin from the sun's damaging rays. Melanin causes your skin to tan. Darker skin has more melanin than lighter skin. Sometimes the sun burns before enough melanin can be made and you get a sunburn. A sunburn does not just hurt, it can damage your skin and lead to more serious problems. All right, so we have another diagram of the skin. This is the epidermis layer. That's where you're gonna see the sunburn. The melanin or melanin is underneath the skin layer in the dermis down here. Nope, I'm sorry, this is still epidermis. And then down here in the dermis, that is your deeper layer. All right, so second problem might be sunburn that you want to note. All right, here's another problem. Have you ever touched a plant like poison ivy? You probably ended up with red, blistering, and itchy skin. The plant's sap irritates the skin and causes a rash. Scented laundry detergent can cause some people's skin to itch. 
Certain drugs can have an effect on your skin too. Steer clear of things you know will irritate you. Your skin will thank you for it. And this caption says certain plants might cause a skin rash. All right, this is the fourth chapter and we're gonna learn just a couple of things that are helpful to know about taking care of your skin. Your skin does a good job of taking care of itself, but there are some things you can do to help make its work easier. Keep your skin clean. It comes in contact with dirt and germs during the day, so wash it with soap and water, then pat it dry rather than rubbing. P Caption says, washing your hands keeps your skin clean. Whoops. Goodness gracious, where did it go? Here we go. Sorry about that. Treat cuts and scrapes gently. Clean the wound and cover it with an antibiotic cream. Then cover it with a bandage to protect it. Do not pick scabs. They are part of the healing process. All right, the inset says, people in many cultures decorate their skin as a way to express themselves. Makeup, tattoos, and piercings are some of the more common methods. You need to be careful with these things and make sure that experts are the ones that help you decide how they are applied so that you don't damage your skin. To avoid sunburn, wear sunscreen when you are outside. You can get sunburn even when it is cloudy. Choose a sunscreen with an SPF of 30 or higher. Apply it evenly over all exposed areas. Make sure to reapply sunscreen after swimming or sweating heavily. Or avoid the sun during its brightest times between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. And the caption says it is important to wear sunscreen when you're outside. You can also treat your skin well from the inside. Drink plenty of water, eat healthy foods. A balanced diet will give your skin energy to do its job. Make sure to get plenty of rest. Much of your skin's repair work happens while you are asleep. Eight hours a night is the right amount for most people. The caption says your skin renews itself while you sleep. This caption says your skin lets you touch and feel the world around you. What a cute pup. All right, back to the story. There is only one organ that lets you feel touch. Thanks to skin, you can feel a soft blanket or the rough bark on a tree. Your skin is the largest part of you. Take care of the skin you are in. What great advice for all of us. All right, the end of the book ends with a glossary that explains things like antibiotic and dermis and epidermis and germs and glands and melanin, melanin. Miss Olson was saying it incorrectly. Melanin. There we go. Organ and SPF. Then there's some other books and websites and things that you can look at. Look at those cute kiddos. All right, guys, it's time for you to make sure that you go back to the template, fill in each of the questions completely, and send that on to me. And then there's going to be a choice board with some other things that you can do if you finish up before library time is over. Have a great day. See you soon.